Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time here, hello, welcome. This is Essential Patience and I am Patience. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about milestones to continue keeping you motivated even after you pay off your debt. The great thing about finances and just learning about financial literacy is that it's more of the same things and it's heavily behavioral more than it is about the math or trying to put in some calculation that is so challenging it's mostly behavior driven and because it's behavior driven and not so much the mathematics of it all and that is for most people there are others like myself who is very mathematically based but about 80 percent of personal finance is behavior and because of that you always need something to keep you motivated and when you're getting out of debt a lot of people will be angry at the debt or themselves and so they're putting so much energy to clear it off but what are some other things to keep you motivated after you pay off your debt what are milestones to keep in mind even when you're debt free to save for because once you're debt free it's not all about going haywire and just buying all the things that you can afford or you want there are so many other milestones in life that we should be thinking about and saving for now do you have to do it very aggressively not always you have time to enjoy life and save for these events but other times, depending on your age and how soon you want a lot of these things, it may cause for you to go more intense on the savings. On this channel, we have discussions about society's impact on our lives and our finances and how we can take back that control to live more intentional lives and make more intentional decisions in our finances. And if that sounds good to you, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my future videos. Let's get straight into today's topic as to what milestones you should consider saving for, for the future. Now, one of the first milestones is definitely an emergency fund. I always rave about emergency fund. It's always encouraged to save three to six months of emergencies. If you're debt free and you don't have a lot of expenses at the moment or beyond your regular expenses, I'm sure a lot of us have tons of regular expenses, but before you start spending all of your money all over the place, think about doing a six months emergency fund. So let's say right now you have a three months emergency fund, but you're not really saving for much and you have more disposable income. A six month emergency fund gives you a stronger foundation than three months because one, it's more money. So if there's a bigger emergency, you just have more money to immediately apply to that situation. Most emergencies are not going to cost a ton of money, but once in a while, it could be a situation where your car breaks down and you need a car immediately. Well, if you had a three month emergency fund of say $9,000, well, that can get you maybe not a $9,000 car, maybe a $7,000 car, but let's say you had a six month emergency fund of $18,000, then you can get yourself say a $15,000 car, or maybe even get the exact same $7,000 car and have more money remaining for other emergencies if they arose. So these are the many things that you have to think about. Now, do you need a one year emergency fund? I mean, if you had that, I'll say at least invest the six months portion of it, like keep it in a brokerage account and keep the other cash in a high yield savings account. I don't think a one year is necessary, but if it makes you feel better, I think you can do that. Just have a portion of it invested. But an emergency fund is a very crucial part about building a financially successful life. Without an emergency fund, you are essentially building your entire financial life without any type of safety net. And everything can come crumbling down because if a huge emergency hits and you have to withdraw from your retirement, or now you have to save up money because you know you're debt free, you have no savings. That can push you back months on your journey. So always make sure that your first milestone is to save up for at least that six month emergency fund when you go beyond the three. If you're trying to still pay off debt or you're trying to quickly save up for something, a three month emergency fund would suffice. But once you're in that situation where you're like, what's next? A six month emergency fund is there. 
The next thing you want to save up for is buying a car, upgrading a car. And this is especially important if, let's say, you sold your car that you're trying to pay off and then bought a beta car. So now you need a better car after paying off all of your debt and having an emergency fund. This is a great time to do it. I'm going for that safe and reliable car. Now, am I going to say buy a $100,000 Corvette? I don't think this is the time to do it because there are so many other things that you can save for. But if you did have the cash to pay for it debt free, I mean, good on you now is it going to be a situation where like 80 percent of your net worth is in a car i don't think that's wise i don't think it's wise that more than 10 percent of your net worth is in a car in many cases so this is the time to upgrade cars you know a little bit or save for a car if you don't have one and after that the next big thing which is a huge part of the american dream is having a house saving for a down payment on a house is very crucial if you want to own a house someday now does that mean that it's something i have to do immediately no a lot of times it takes people years to save down a down payment for a house especially if you want to do a 20 percent and the reason why 20 percent is so great is that you would not have to pay the pmi aside from having a bigger equity stake in your house but a pmi is a private mortgage insurance which you often have to pay or always have to pay if you put down less than 20 percent and this is a monthly bill with your mortgage and other taxes and fees so if you do have a 20 percent down payment to put on there then you get to skip by meaning that oftentimes as you pay you pay more into the equity of your house and you're not going to be in debt as much so with that being said a down payment on a house is amazing it's a great thing to always save for even if you don't think you want to buy a house in the next five years but you have the goal of buying a house in the next 10 years 15 years even 20 years that's all good just try saving keep that money invested if it's going to be so far away but if it's going to be sometime up close it's best to keep it in a high yield savings account where you get a guaranteed interest rate for that period rather than risking it in the market. So for example, if you wanted to do 20%, if you were gonna buy a $100,000 house, which yes, they do exist somewhere in the country. I know this is very rare. Just an example, if the house was $100,000, you have to put down $20,000. But for most loans, to get a conventional loan or an FHA loan, you typically have to put like 3%, 3.5% down. That means that your monthly payment will be much higher as well as you will be paying the PMI. But another thing that I think a lot of people often forget to save for is education, whether it's higher education or certification or just something to boost your knowledge and take you to the next level. So I'm an engineer and I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. I'm currently getting my master's degree in engineer management. Luckily for me, my job helps and I have a scholarship that helps pay for my education as I'm going part time. Sometimes you reach an income level where you cannot qualify for a lot of these. Or maybe you work at a place where maybe they pay partial or maybe they do reimbursements where you have to pay up front and then they will pay you back. So there's so many things that go into this. But whichever it is, it is really important that if you do know that you want to pursue higher education in the future, to start saving for it now. Now, in the future, I might want to pursue an MBA, not likely a PhD, but maybe I would consider it. So if it's something that I know that I want to do, it's great that after I have saved that deposit in my house, I probably moved into a house and I'm redoing my budget. It would be good to put those savings towards something that I know will benefit me in the future. And getting a higher education is so beneficial, not just the learning that you do. That learning develops you personally, but also it has a benefit on many of our careers. I mean that oftentimes we are able to get promotions or recommended for a new position, or maybe even if you wanted to pivot. From your current career into a different career getting an education in that allows you the opportunity to do so so don't be afraid no matter what age that you are if you want to pursue higher education start saving for it right now another milestone to save for is an event that occurs in many people's lives which is a wedding if you've not watched my video on the cost of weddings please go watch it it is such a good video i've had good feedback on it and be sure to like it and leave a comment i will be reading your comments and responding but from that video we found out that the median cost of a wedding in the united states today is about thirty three thousand dollars but it can go up from there depending on what state that you live in it could be even more if you know you want to get married someday or in a relationship that is geared towards marriage start saving if you want a big wedding a huge wedding which i do not judge people for 
you can start saving on that right now as well. The best thing to do is to have a debt-free wedding. In that video, we found out that about 54% of people having weddings today go into some sort of debt, whether it is credit card debt, getting personal for their wedding or even family debt. And this is a horrible way to start your marriage. You know that you wanna get married someday, start saving, even if it's $100 a month, $500 a month, because you want a bigger extravagant wedding, start saving right now. Another thing that we often don't consider when saving is saving for upgrades in our lives. For example, a new phone. Oftentimes, people don't think about it because when they think about getting a new phone, they think about getting on the payment plan and it just becoming one of their bills. And then once that payment plan ends, they get on another payment plan for another phone. But if you want to update technology in your life, and it's something that we all have to do at some point because the longer we have our phones, computers, they typically run slower. There's just better quality stuff out there, improved technology. So it's great to have a savings going for updating technology. I know that I've had my iPhone for two years. It's my first iPhone ever. The Apple Care has basically ran out, which is fine. I plan on keeping my phone for several more years. But once it's time to upgrade, I'm going to start probably the year before just saving for it. Saving for the upgrade on there. My computer, I might replace it sooner. Not immediately. I just got a new computer this year. I'm thinking maybe in the next three years, I may have to upgrade it. Maybe I may have to get my phone and computer at the same time. I'll see. Because in that time, my phone will probably be like five years old, which is still fine. But if I wanted to upgrade it, I'm not just going to go into the store without a budget, without money secured for this upgrade. It goes the same for furniture. If you want to update the furniture in your apartment or house, it is great to always make sure that you have a budget and you're saving for it months and even years in advance. This goes the same with trying to renovate a house or even upgrading to a different house in general or even a car. So let's say you will have a car that is fully paid for, but you want to upgrade it. So this car is worth about $20,000, so that's what you're gonna get for it's on a private sale. And then you now have kids and you're trying to move into an SUV and it's like $40,000. Well, you can start saving that difference right now so that when the time comes and it's time to move into that bigger SUV, you will not have to take out any debt on it because you would have that cash to pay for it outright, surpassing all the interest and other things that come with taking out debt. Home renovations as well, they are typically more expensive than you even budget for it. So going in with cash and be like, this is the amount of money I have and I'm sticking to this, gives us a clear view of our plans and also a reminder as the money decreases that this is what I plan to do and I should be reasonable about the upgrades. And if I want to do more in the future, I can save up money and do more at a later time. And a milestone to save for for those who want to be parents in the future, including myself, are definitely just saving for your children. If you have children currently or you're about to have a child, opening up a 529 for their tuition in the future will be so important. Education is becoming more and more costly every single year. And because of that, if you want your kids to go to college debt free, if you want them to have some tax benefit while doing so, a 529 account is a great place to do it and to put their money. When it's their birthdays and people give money, put it in there. Just start saving consistently and getting that money invested. So when it's time for them to go to college, they would have a lot of money in savings to help out. Even if it doesn't pay for all of their education outright, between the 529 fund scholarships and maybe a little loan here and there, depending on if they're doing like a PhD medical school, you will be able to help them out, not take on such a substantial amount of debt at such a young age. But also, you can start saving to help your children. Even when you're older, it's not too late to gift to your children. So for example, if you wanted to pay for your kid's wedding in the future, you could start saving for that so that when it's time, you can give them a good gift to either pay for the entire wedding or at least a good enough amount that would take on a lot of financial burden from them. In the same token, you can also help them with a down payment on a house. A lot of time when you're ready to buy a house, getting a down payment to acquire the house is so much work and takes such a long time. For example, the median cost of a house in the United States is about $420,000, meaning that if you wanted to put down a 20% down payment on a house to get a mortgage, you are looking at over $80,000, almost $85,000. 
with that being said if you could give that to your children maybe not all eighty five thousand, but you know ten thousand fifteen thousand twenty forty whatever you can afford to give it will be such a blessing onto them so that's something else you can say for to gift onto them so that yes you had to struggle for your down payment but your kids wouldn't have the same struggles as you they would do better because you have prepared and you are gifting them something that most people never get and you will see that they will be ahead of their peers and ahead of the game and the last but absolutely least if you follow me for a long time you know exactly where this is going and that is retirement start saving for retirement if you're not saving for retirement at the moment get on to it open your 401k open that hsa open that roth ira everyone that is available to you make a good use of it and start saving for your retirement. I don't know about you, but I do not want to work forever. And because I want to set myself up for a great future, starting to save now allows me to have compound interest on that money. So in a typical market, if you invest a dollar today, that dollar would become $2 in seven years. And then seven years after that, it becomes $4. And then seven more years after that, it becomes $8. That is how a lot of compound interest grows and you get money on top of your interest as long as you're also reinvesting whatever dividends and the growth and because of that consistency is one of the most important parts even more than just the amount that you're putting in consistently investing in the market leaving it there buying the diverse investments such as an index fund and most importantly staying consistent and leaving it there even when the market goes down not panicking and selling will give you such great outcome research shows that people who consistently buy into the market people who are not taking their money in and out of the market are able to get that full benefit that other people who impulsively buy and impulsively sell will not be able to achieve because in the words of warren buffett time in the market beats timing the market so with that being said thank you so much for watching this video like comment and subscribe and share this video with anybody who you think will be helpful towards on the retirement i will be coming out with a video about the retirement situation for 2025 so stay tuned for that and also be sure to leave any of your questions in the comment section and let me know which of these milestones that you're about to reach or which ones you're currently saving for or if you have any idea of any other milestones that i missed but you would like to include please put it in the comment section i may make a future video on this and update it as well so thank you all again and i'll see you in my next video bye